introduce your uh, chief guest, please. Yeah, please. Thank you, thank you, Mudasami sir. I'm Ramesh, and uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity to introduce the chief guest, Mr. Rajiv Nayar, who also happens to be the president of our institute. Though Mr. Nayar needs no introduction, being so well known in the industry, I am duty bound by protocol to do the honors. Mr. Rajiv is a marine engineer with over 35 years of experience in the shipping industry, very well known. He has had stints in Great Eastern Shipping, SR Group, where he was where he had also headed their oil field services business as CEO. Starting from 2021, Rajiv has been actively engaged as an independent maritime consultant. Mr. Rajiv Mayer has consistently been an enthusiastic participant in all the activities organized by the Institute and has made uh, very valuable contributions for nearly 15 years. He has been an office bearer in various capacities of Navi Mumbai chapter, Mumbai branch, and thereafter now at the head office. Rajiv has been an active contributor to the maritime industry, extending his expertise to the oil and gas industry. He has been actively involved in the past, contributing his expertise through various committees of INSA and technical committees of various IAX members. And he is presently the vice chair of the IRS technical committee. He is also part of the shadow committee for MEPC, MSC and STW, formed by DE Shipping and contributes to the preparations for the meetings of MEPC, ISWG, GHD, PPR, MSC, and STW. He has been part of the Indian delegation to the IMO to attend ISWG, GHG 13, MEPC 79, PPR 9 and 10, STW 9, MSC 107, and also is a member of various correspondence groups established at IMO sessions. We are delighted to have him accept our invite and agree ha, and having agreed to grace this occasion of the first technical meet of IMEI Chennai after the formation of the new committee. We are eager to hear those few words of wisdom coming from such an illustrious mariner like Mr. Rajiv. Over to Mr. Rajiv, the dais is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramesh, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be physically in Chennai, though this time we are on remote. There's so many known people who interacted in the past and uh, seniors like Rajan Saab and all. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be there and it's great to be there in the first technical session of this new committee. And thank you, the team at Chennai, which is starting this uh, magnificent, in a magnificent way with a very relevant topic. But first of all, uh, let me extend the uh, season's greetings of this festive season, the festival, uh, festive season of Diwali, the festival of lights, and wish you all and your families that this brings you endless happiness, prosperity, good health, and wealth forever. And also, we fulfill our objective of getting marine engineering technology moving to every corner of not only the country, but play an international role as well. I also do note that Chennai is will be hosting WMTC next year, though towards the latter half of the year. And I think it's very essential that we have these technical sessions as a build up for the big event, which will be WMTC. It's a very relevant topic, which Mr. Suresh Chennai has cho chosen today on the roadmap of future legislations. And I'm sure it will be very, very relevant. And with such sessions going across all over, I am sure we'll be prepared as the Indian Marine Engineers Fraternity, along with the Academia, which is also now very highly concentrated in Chennai to be ready for WMTC as well. So I wish Chennai branch, not only this session, but of many more such sessions, and of course, their mega event, WMTC, all the success and look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, I also see another prominent member here, Dr. Sixena, of West team here for after of time. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. Uh, the speaker, I, I have. I don't have to introduce myself for the speaker. Speaker himself is very well known. Uh, our chairman, Suresh, uh, has been there for the industry for quite a long time. 
and uh, he was a project manager for the company and also he is recently involved in uh, various activities of this uh, topic which you are going to talk uh, switch the dice is yours i don't have to introduce so much on this yeah please go thank you thank you friends so my plan is the question and answer session we'll have at the end of the thing so in between please don't disturb you can note down what all questions i will answer at the end we have a question and answer session Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Yes, yes, yes we can see. Yes. I mean the slideshow. Yeah, please press F5. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is the agenda for today. If you can't see, please tell me. Eh? So this is the item five. So today's topic is the future legislation roadmap. So uh, I will first start with the hot topic or uh, for the ship managers and the ship owners, which is going to come. That is the EU ETS. That is European emission, European Union emission trading system. So what is this European emission trading system? ETS is just the new regulation to reduce the greenhouse gas. So how they will reduce it? They are going to impose what is known as the, for a layman language, it is a carbon tax. Whatever carbon you are emitting, I mean, in terms of CO2, you have to pay tax for that. And what a new method they have selected is, the, you have to pay European Union allowance. Allowance means it is just like our debit card, or prepaid card. This allowance you have to buy in advance by paying the money. And at the end of the year, in the September month, you have to surrender these allowances. And each allowances, what does it mean? It means if you buy so much allowance, then that company or that vessel is permitted to emit so much CO2, or the now they are calling greenhouse gas. They are not calling CO2 because in the future, 2026, they are planning to introduce, monitor even methane and nitrous oxide. So the plan is now, I mean the EU plan. So please don't think it's only EU plan. So next, uh, US has already passed this legislation. We all know that if EU comes something, then the uh, US will also come or IMO will come in the end. So for all cargo ships above 5,000 GT, this is applicable now, EU ETS. And for offshore vessels, this is applicable in 2027. Even the European Union is saying as greenhouse gas, currently they are going to monitor only CO2 from 2024. And 2026, they want to include methane and nitrous oxide also, because that is also considered as a greenhouse gas. So. How do we comply with EU ETS? Uh, deadline is fast approaching. They are saying 1st April 2024, all the vessels which is going to European Union, they have to submit their, what is their plan for the next year, one year, how much CO2 they are going to emit. This will be based on the history of the vessel for the last two years. And starting from 1st January 2024, and the reporting period is 31st December 2024. This report has to be submitted by 31st March. And this has to be submitted to the administration or the RO. RO will afterwards will submit it to the flag state. And according to this approved one, by 30th September, they have to pay or surrender the allowance which they have already yeah. bought, already bought to the eu commission now we all know that if they don't pay what will happen 
they are going to impose a huge penalty if you don't surrender these allowances. So if you got delayed below after 30th September every year, then the penalty is in addition to the EU allowances surrendering, you have to pay additionally 100 euros per ton of CO2. And if one ship is as not paid, their whole fleet will be affected. And if you fail to pay within two or more consecutive years, then the whole company fleet will be banned from trading in the EU. Now the point comes from where we can purchase this EU allowances. First, we can buy it. It is just like our stock exchange at the Dalal Street in Mumbai. First, when they are releasing it, there will be an auction and it will be sold in the exchange. They are going to call it European Energy Exchange, similar to our stock exchange. From there, you can buy and stock it. That will be the minimum price. Or if you don't have them, you can buy it from the secondary market, from the open market, where it will be more expensive. And this price is not fixed. According to demand and supply, it can go up and go down. So that is why you have to. Now, what the confusion here was that initially when they released it, European Union Commission said that the document of compliance holder, that is the ship manager, they are liable to pay these allowances. As uh, ship managers know, as I also belong to V-Ships, it is not a budgeted these allowances and it's a huge amount of money where you have to buy and it becomes a dead stock. And you have to pay it only end of the year. So all the managers said they have opposed it. Now they have European Union has chained it. Now they say ship owners is responsible for surrendering it, not the DOC holder. And they have suggested that you can have a tie up with your charter party, like the charter party is doing the when they are giving the vessel, they will do the bunker survey at the end of the charter party contract. Again, bunker survey and whatever the difference in the bunker that is settled down. Similarly, in this case, before they are coming, they say you just inform the charter party. What is your allowances? What is your emissions? So the charter party will buy and give it to you at the end of your charter party agreement. You decide how much you have to pay and you settle between yourselves. That is one suggestion they are given, which the owner are also going to do. Next is the future regulation, the IMO. Let's come to the IMO regulations. First, I am categorizing what are the safety amendments they are going to come. This is the amendment in the IMS BC code. This happened after the bulk Jupiter, one vessel which is loaded in Kwantan in Malaysia. They have loaded bauxite in raw and unwashed. Bauxite means we know it is an iron or aluminium ore and a mineral ore. So when they declared it, the shipper declared only of 10% moisture content. But the vessel was delayed there for 10 days and it was raining continuously and the hatch cover was left open. And this cargo is a liquefying cargo which they are not bothered because once it become powdered form that it becomes more dangerous and it will get liquefied faster. So within few days of sailing, once their vessel was at the coast of Vietnam, vessel listed to 45 degrees and they raised the general alarm. Within 20 minutes of raising the general alarm, the vessel sank off and only chief cook managed to escape and he there means only one out of only one survived out of 18. So what the amendment is all this mineral cargo liquefying cargo will be classified in the group A cargo and the shipper has to give them the correct moisture content so that they can take the they will know that what is the threshold moisture content of that. Next is the amendment to the mooring arrangement. We all know that there have been so many accidents. So they are going to bring a new amendment that the design should be have the strengthening of the mooring equipment and there should be inspection and maintenance. This is applicable for vessels 3000 GT and above or the contract sign on or after 1st January 2024. But for the existing ships, this inspection and maintenance will include from 1st January 2024. That means all these ropes, 
all the brake lining, testing of the thing, and the lube oil sampling, gear lube oil renewal, all this has to be documented and included in their PMS system. Next is the watertight bulkhead. Now they are going to amend it, Solar Chapter 2. They are saying that the walls, doors, hatches can be fixed on the watertight bulkhead and there should be inspections of this watertight bulkhead before and during the voyages, and those should be properly documented. This will come into force from 1st January 2024. Again, we have one vessel, El Faro, a multi-hold ship. Those days, it need not have a water level detection alarm in the cargo space. This vessel, after sailing, it, it sank due to flooding, and the ship was found a month later three miles under the sea, all 33 crew on board died. So this application, this amendment has come after that. Now, as per this amendment, all new cargo ships with more than one cargo hold should be having this water detection alarm. And this will enter into force from 1st January 2024. Next amendment is for the GMDSS. GMDSS they have amended the certificates, records, functional requirements was modified slightly, and their definition of sea area A3 has been changed. This is applicable for all ships, new and existing ships above 300 GT. This will enter into force from 1st January 2024. This amendment is for the Chapter 3 LSA code. They have removed the requirement for the free fall lifeboat with the ship speed at five knots in calm water. This is applicable for cargo ships above 20,000 GT and above. This will enter into force from 1st January 2024. Next is the fire detection amendment. We have all seen there are so many fires on the passenger ships and the source of fire is from the balcony of the passengers. So in few cases, how it happened is the ship staff or the electric officer was working on the fire detection alarm and he had isolated those fire detectors in the balconies also. So when the fire started in the balconies, those were not detected. So as per this new rule amendment, all these balcony detectors, they should have a separate isolation. They should not be isolated commonly. This is applicable for all vessels, cargo vessels above 500 GT and all passenger ships which are having cabin balconies. This will be applicable from 1st January 2024. FSS code oars in the lifeboat. This amendment is if you are having two independent propulsion system, then there is no requirement to carry the buoyant oars. This will come into effect from 1st January 2024. This is hand operated mechanism. I know that all of you, including me, we don't agree with this, but we have to accept now since the, they have made the amendment. This amendment says that rescue boat below 700 kg can have a hand operated lowering mechanism. We all know that it will going to take more time if you have an hand operated mechanism because rescue boat is for emergency purposes. So we all don't know why they have brought in these amendments. Next is the IBC and IGC code water tights on the cargo ships. They are going to allow it for the you can have an hinge type water tight doors. I hope everybody knows this IBC and IGC code. IGC means for the gas carriers means the gas, liquefied gas is carried in as a cargo. Now I'm talking about IGF code. IGF code means those ships which are using fuel within the flash point below 60 degrees. Of course, LNG ships will include and this is applicable for the new dual fuel ships are coming or where they are using the reliquifying LNG or LPG as the fuel means basically this is for the propulsion type. So this is that tank of our dam amendment need not have a pressure relief valve. It's applicable for IGF code 
and this will come into force from 1st January 2024. Next again for the IGF code, they have said that this missionary where they are having this gas preparation fuel pumps, compressor room, this should have a fixed firefighting system which can deal with the gas fires. This will come into force from 1st January 2024. So next is the amendment for the environmental requirement. Ballast water system. We know that the ballast water treatment system D2 compliance. As of now, the flag state can give extension, but not beyond 8 September 2024. This is the deadline which IMO is not going to change, which they have changed so many times. Now they have said that all ships should have this by 8 September 2024. Garbage record book. Currently, only vessels having uh, 400 GT and above should have the garbage record book. Now they are amended it. All vessels above 100 GT should have this garbage record book. And this will enter into force from 1st May 2024. This is an IMO DCS requirement when you are filing that IMO DCS, you have to include what is your attain EXI, EDI and CII. This is applicable for all ships above 5000 GT. But if you are having an approved SIM, then this is not required. This will come into force from 1st May 2024. BDN information. BDN information now they are saying from 1st May 2024, they should have an additional information in the BDN. That is, they should declare that this fuel flash point is above 70 degree centigrade. If that is not included, then the chief engineer should demand that they should give a statement saying that this is above 70 degree because this is liable to be checked by the PSC and the chief engineer or the ship staff will be in trouble if they don't have it. This will come from 1st May 2024. Mediterranean Sea will become a SICA area. That is the SOX emissions control area from 1st May 2024. Next is the future for the our ship staff. That is the, what are the amendments in the MLC. MLC amendments only recruitment and the training. We all know that when they were they are uh, shipping companies, RSPL, when they are taking people or the company, they have be having so many inductions courses, which is mandatory for some companies, some companies not so mandatory. Now they have said that there have been so many claims for the ship show, uh, ship staff which have been given that they can claim, but they are unaware of that where to claim, how to claim. So as per this amendment, those shipping companies, they are supposed to train the ship staff or give them the information how to go about their claim and so that they can claim it. This will enter into force in December 2024. This is for the accommodation and recreational facilities. <clears throat> we know that the some of the owners or ship management, they are giving the additional facilities for internet as a favor. Now, after this amendment, it is no more a favor. They are going to make it mandatory. All ships should have an internet facility for the benefit of the ship staff or the crew and they can charge them a reasonable amount for the services they are using it. This will apply from coming to force from December 2024. This also we know that the new rule which says that the owner or the manager should give them the free drinking water and the balanced meal. Now currently some of the companies, they don't give drinking water, they give some meals and we don't know whether it is a balanced or fully balanced and they tell them to drink water from the taps and if you want to buy the mineral water, then you have to pay for it. So after this amendment, then they will get free drinking water and the balanced meal. 
even though they have not yet defined what is the balanced meal and what it should constitute that will come later on but there is a definitely a good news for the seafarers it will enter into force from december 2024 amendment is come for our uh, lady cadets or the women seafarers they have found that that the ppe which is already on board is for the men and for the ladies the currently when they are joining they are very lean so with this ppe if they wear it is not comfortable not only comfortable it become hazardous and if it becomes so loose it get entangled and they can't move freely in the enclosed spaces so after this amendment they have told that if you have a women seafarers on board then the ppe should be according to their size the shipping companies can't just supply a ppe of the general thing so they have to see the ppe which will be suitable for the women seafarers now this evidence for financial security for you and me or for a layman the name ship owner and the register owner look same both are same but in legal terms both are not same so in legally what they are saying that in the declaration of mlc they have to include registered owner's name not the ship owner's name this will also come from december 2024 okay now i have completed that now open for a question and answer session uh if possible as much as possible try to tap type it in the chat it will be better or if you have a time you can some of you can ask some of you can put it on the chat it will be better i think somebody asked the uh, one question in the chat flash point why increase to 70 degree chennai flash point flash point is not increased to 70 degrees flash point again it should be 60 degrees only but declaration they have to give above 70 degrees that should be the safety point that is the rule which they have brought it i also know that the you can burn only above 60 degrees uh, mr chennai thank you yes, for a uh, wonder, uh, wonderful presentation i am uh, dr bhandar sir from mumbai a uh, very beginning uh, you have said uh, this uh, eu regulations to me it sounds more of a commercial or business oriented rather than containing the pollutions or the co2 your comment okay sir yeah it is not commercial sir it is a threat like you know that now the traffic rule drunk and driving from 2000 they have increased to 10000 can you say that it is to fill up the coffers of the government no it is a threat now people have stopped drunk and driving at least in chennai because with the 10000 you can buy three johnny walker bottles so similarly over here if they are requesting them they are fudging the report and the co2 emissions is not coming down so this is taken by them just as a threat like they said that in future you will be paying more so how to avoid paying more bring down your emission so it is basically so you cannot call it entirely commercial commercial point of view for our side but think of the people in the european union they are people are fighting their thing not like in india india nobody is bothered you can have all sorts of uh, all sorts of regulations nobody is worried about the environment hope i have answered it uh there is another question uh, in the chat igf code tank copper yeah. dam no pressure okay, relief valve yeah yeah it say said please explain i myself am not an uh, gas carrier man 
so i won't be knowing that why what was the reason required now i can only tell the regulation says that you don't need a pressure relief system there so somebody from the who has an uh, lng man will be able to say that why they have removed the regulation what was the requirement and all another one from mr mani regarding uh, watertight dose operation is there is any limitation of time period for closing period as new amendments which one are you talking about the valves to be included in the watertight bulkhead mani mani is there on the scene yeah mani, mani can yes, you sir. unmute unmute and not no it's not the, it is not the, the watertight dose closing Ah. Uh, the uh, maximum uh, that is the time you, know, you have to you cannot uh, close very fast. There is any time limit on that? You mean the inspection no. of the watertight door? No, no, no. Closing time. Closing time for the watertight door. No, no. That and all details they have not come because if you see they have mentioned that uh, here they can fix even the walls, doors, and all. Again, when they are fixing the walls in the watertight bulkhead, so many doubts will come. What types of wall? how big what is the requirement all those details they have not yet come out with because they are saying they have still have enough time the details final details have not yet they have not yet released it the closing okay. time opening time they have not yet mentioned because this is a cargo ship no not for the passenger vessel they have not mentioned it is remote closing or manual closing all those details have not yet come but before it was for cargo generally for all cargo vessels it was about 20 seconds uh it's not close uh, less than 20 seconds something like that yeah yeah no no here it is not for the watertight door basically but they are talking about the walls and the door hatches you can fit it in the bulkhead watertight bulkhead basically that additional thing you can fit that also they have not yet come out like i said okay thank you sir Uh, that LNG question, I can take it up if it is uh, part of the dual fuel engine. Uh, uh, I yeah, missed that question. Yeah, Raghu, you are the right person because the regulation says in the IGF vessel, the coffer dam they have removed the pressure relief valve system. So somebody is asking why they removed because I am not sure where the coffer dam is. The dual fuel ships, as far as uh, I am aware of, uh, uh, the piping are all double wall pipes. So no, Raghu, the the, no, not the not the piping. The tank offer dam. There used to be a pressure relief system. Now they have removed that requirement. Okay. The IGF. That, uh, that I am not aware of it. Primarily, yeah, so... I am given to understand that all these uh, gas piping. Or uh, it's a mandatory requirement to have double wall piping with continuous air passage through the outer pipe mm -hmm. uh, while the gas flows in 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 the inner pipe. Uh, uh, no, no. As we far are, as yeah, the offer yeah. dams are concerned, I don't think there is that much of a distance between the tank uh, from the bunker tank to the uh, fuel gas uh, preparation room uh, to the engine room. So the the pipelines are relatively short. I'm only assuming that if you fit a LNG uh, bunker tank in a container ship, that a coffer dam may be there. But uh, with the latest uh, hydrocarbon sensors being installed, uh, I think they have adequate uh, redundancy as far as safety is concerned, and probably that is why I don't think a coffer dam will get pressurized for it to have. Uh, 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 requirement for pressure relief. Yeah, that is my understanding of it. But I, I understood uh, in LNG carriers, they used to have a coffer dam where we used to pressurize with the uh, inert gas. That is in case of uh, your tank leaks or something to prevent any. No, I'm, I'm not talking about a full-fledged LNG carrier. I'm talking about. Oh, this is a. Uh, uh, LNG this is a, system yeah. which is fitted in other type of ships. Where Mato Sami, this is for the IGF code. Uh, yeah, this is for the IGF code. Yeah. IGF so code, not the basically uh, not the IGC code. Uh, 
uh, correct. Okay. Not the IGC code. It is the IGF code. So I'm assuming that the LNG system is uh, primarily installed as a uh, with a bunker tank on non LNG ships. That is on container ships, on bulk carriers, on car carriers, uh, on tankers, uh, oil tankers, etc. Yeah, uh, I'm Ravi here. Uh, Ravi, Ravi, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can see uh, my drawings. It is uh, all the requirements of even uh, container ships for fitting dual fuel uh, gas gas parts or tanks. We have to fulfill IGF code. Everything has to be there as per IGF code. That is and correct. there, yeah, and there is a, uh, a space annular space around this uh, LNG tank. There is annular space which is called void space around the LNG tank. Uh, does okay. it have a does it have a pressure relief system? This I have to check it because this is yeah. uh, I can I I'm just checking the drawing. I don't find yeah, any no. pressure relief system. Yeah, no, no, no I that's don't what think the... it is a it is a necessity primarily because uh, the in a container ship it is more like a cassette. It's a membrane type of a tank which yeah, is installed. Correct. Whereas in bulk areas and uh, oil tankers, it is uh, a C type tank which is installed on deck on bulk areas because of cargo uh, movement up front. The tanks are installed in the back of the ship, in the rear of the ship. Uh, whereas in oil tankers, since that requirement is not there, we can install it in uh, forward of the accommodation. Whereas in a container ship and car carriers, it is inserted down uh, uh, as uh, in a particular cargo bay. They have taken up that space and inserted a membrane uh, type of uh, design uh, LNG tank. So uh, uh, with regard to the annular space, like I said, uh, the, the leakage aspect is uh, governed by uh, uh, sensors which are uh, uh, situated all along the route of the piping and hence you get adequate alarm in case there is a leakage and I do not anticipate such a big leakage plus even if there is a leakage the whole sh uh, system uh, shuts down automatically once the hydrocarbon sensor picks up a leakage and and your engine reverts back to fuel oil mode so there is no disruption as far as the engine running is concerned, uh, as far as dual fuel ships is concerned. Okay, any any other questions? I was expecting more questions on EUETS from the ship managers. Because all the ship managers, they are worried who will buy, who will pay. Who's going to monitor a lot of issues over there? That's why I included more yeah, slides on that. Have you, sir, you have to unmute. I just, please. Uh, yeah, I just posted three questions. First is, is EU penalty for the company or for average for the company? In like for individual vessel or for average for the company? Uh, EU ETS? Yeah. Are you talking about EU ETS? Yeah. No, no, yeah, that's what they said that, uh, like I said that. Now they have changed. Initially, they said that the allowance will be paid, surrendered by the DOC holder. Now they have yeah. changed. It's for the ship owner who is going to pay and who is going to suffer if he doesn't pay. Okay, either so he has to decide. Either he has to decide that he can't take the ship to EU, or he has end up, or he should have an agreement with the charter party. So charter party will get the payment, so he can increase his freight charges. That is the only solution yeah. for him. So if one DOC holder has five, six companies or five, six ship owners. No, D DOC holder is not penalized now. They have changed no, no. the, they have no, changed no. it. Yeah, because all the DOC holder will go down. No, one ship okay. is enough. Why do you need? No. It's the owners. Okay. Now that's what that cha they have changed it. So it will not be compensated. That's what I'm telling that you, you no, are no, under DOC, one. DOC, yeah, DOC holder basically we are managers. We don't have that much uh, money in the budget. And you know these managers, they don't pay a single penny from their pocket. They'll always wait for the owners to come. Then they will just uh, transfer that money. Only postman job they will do. No, so my question yeah. is still same that, okay, I am ship owner. I have two ships mm. in EU. 
Yeah. And I have been penalized for one ship and but all ship, ship all is, ships all, all ships will be banned. All ships. All ships will be penalized. That's what I uh, said. If uh, one ship doesn't pay two or more consecutive years, then all ships of that company will be banned penalized. from trading in EU. Mm. And that's heavy penalty, you know. Okay. And other question is the what is the trading platform for this? Uh, like you were discussing that we will have uh, trading that if somebody is yeah. having excess carbon, somebody is having less carbon emission yeah. and they can exchange this one. So is there anything confirmed yeah. that where they can do this exchange? Yes, that's what I said. You cannot exchange between ships. You can exchange these allowances. You can buy these True. allowances and sell the allowances. True. Okay, you... like just secondary market like the stock exchange, the Lal Street. No, you have got so many shares. Now the share price have gone up. So your what, vessel is, the... your your vessel is not going to you. You have got enough uh, allowances. You you sell it in the secondary market. So you make that money. That is with the owner. They are going yeah, to so start an exchange, a European uh, energy exchange. Yeah, that so they will start this. OK, European they will. They will yeah. start this exchange. You can you can sell it if you, you feel that you already bought. But uh, in that year uh, it will not go. So you wait yeah. for the prices to go up again. It becomes a Paka trading. Like you so know, EU that exchange has to open. Uh, EU exchange EU, has to open. No, no. You can yeah. sell it in the black market also. What they call secondary Directly market. To okay. Directly, Directly to another other owner. Company. Okay. Another owner, if you have contact. This is also difficult. Yeah. No, like how you will contact that owner. You know that okay, that owner has access. Ah, uh, don't worry. Yeah. The some uh, some <laughs> of the <laughs> middleman will come up then. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. They have uh, brokers who are uh, doing these carbon credits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There are uh, a lot I, of brokers might... there. I myself seen a broker who was doing the carbon trading in India. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so, so Mahmood, yeah, this company is there in India. Recently, I have seen this KPI Energy. I think they yeah. have uh, they have this exchange. Yeah, yeah, the buy and sell. Like Maybe Mutu Swami yeah. will start one office in EU. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And one more question from my side. I have just posted yeah, know, that uh, yeah. about the 70 degree flash point. So yeah. How the chief engineer will know that uh, or how chief engineer will uh, confirm because yeah. as a chief engineer, I will not sign anything that OK, this flash point is okay. above 70 degrees. Okay, so, okay. Uh, this is the problem. OK, OK. Can I answer that? You see, yeah, BDN, there are other details giving. Chief engineer is signing. He doesn't have any equipment to verify other. He is giving the uh, what all other things sulfur content is given? Yeah. Can the chief engineer verify the sulfur content? No, he has to no, wait till the ana analysis comes. Analysis. Okay. He has to blindly sign, and the PSC needs this from the supplier, from the bunker barge. Okay. Chief engineer cannot verify all those things. He doesn't have any facility. He yes. has to send it for fuel oil analysis. Only analysis so, report come. Okay, so but either then, uh, that guy, that guy will be penalized now. Like in Singapore, you have supplier. seen that no, so many supply of bunker barges were penalized. So they can take it up with the port. Port okay. will uh, penalize them, but he should have this information. That is more important. So means uh, in the we can say the BDN should include this one flash. One point. more, yeah, one more, yeah. yeah. Details otherwise, about flash point. If it doesn't give it, uh, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, if if I bunker in Singapore and I'm going to Brazil. Mm. And uh, I have to offline the bunker sample. The report will come on board and it, yeah, maybe yeah. it will be one week, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what what I'm saying, this uh, information you have escalated to your ship staff. They should be aware that this new rule is come. Yeah. Uh, can can I come in on to... that BDN issue a bit? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, OK, yeah. there's a bit of a background to this about 70 degrees. Your flash point remains at 60 degrees. The issue is when you if you give a particular value of a flash point, let's say if you set 60.5. Now, for somebody to verify whether it is 60.5 or 59.9, those were the issues which are creating a lot of challenges because of the type of methodology used, the close cup method or what method. And this used to lead to a lot of disputes. And so the bunker suppliers would do two, three tests to make sure that a proper value is given. However, if it is more than 70 degree, then you don't really require to give a very, very accurate figure on the bunker delivery note. That's why if it is below 70 degree, you must have a specific value of the flash point. 
However, if it has gone above 70 degree and you are in the range whether a test is carried out by APSC or BPSC, it will not matter. Therefore, you have the flexibility of writing above 70 degrees. Th that's how that provision of above 70 degrees has come. It has not changed anything with respect to 60, but below 70 and between 60, you require to give a specific value so that the PSC check is absolutely making about it sure. I hope that sort of uh, gives a this is my thank understanding you. of the background of this. <coughs> thank, 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 thank you, sir. Sir, one more question was asked from Mr. Ranjit. Can you read, sir, how to use words for fully enclosed light board? We also have difficulty during PSRB training. How to use hose? Uh, words the, in the light board, enclosed light board, you are closing ah. all the <coughs> tight words. But whereas mm. the crutches are there, like uh, we have been asked also to show. So we, we literally we have to remove the like yeah. the, the loads and uh, that's what yeah. we are doing. Sarbi, but uh, you can yeah. explain it. Ramki, that is outside. Uh, that is outside the preview of the today's topic. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll not waste time on that. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, regarding regarding uh, bunkering of dual fuels, uh, the chief engineer is all the more in the dark, especially if you're bunkering LNG. There is no way you can collect a sample on board the ship. So you will have to rely on uh, the barge and that fellow will have to rely on the terminal where he has bunkered uh, uh, the LNG and you will have to take for granted the terminal report. Uh, there is no uh, uh, lab uh, testing uh, uh, because uh, you're not able to collect any samples. Uh, they started giving a small bullet sample as when you uh, uh, take LNG as a cargo, but uh, they have stopped giving that, saying that uh, it's too less a quantity for us to start giving you those uh, samples in a bullet container. Uh, it's called a bullet container because it, it it's shaped like a bullet, uh, pressurized uh, steel uh, for, uh, holding the LNG. So therefore, uh, uh, when it comes to LNG bunkering, you have to just rely on the info given by the uh, barge who gets info from the turbine. Yeah, correct, because we are bunkering LNG and uh, we never got any sample. And as per requirement also, you don't need because they give you the bunk uh, LNG certificate. That is quality correct, yes. quality certificate. Quality certificate, yes. Usually, yes. terminal will test before they load your cargo. Once you get the testing is approved, then only they start loading it. That's no, no, we are talking way. about the bunker, Muthuswami, not the cargo. Bunkering. LNG bunkering. We are talking about the BDN. Yeah, along with that BDN, they give okay. one quality certificate. Yeah. Again, that is the way on uh, terminal, like uh, Raghu said. Yeah. It's come from. No, not terminal, and, uh, actually. No, no, it's not terminal because uh, on uh, like container vessels for us, uh, we are loading ship to ship. And because we are in port oh, and are, uh, other ship is bunker going barge. here. Bunker barge. Yeah. It is not barge now. It is only LNG vessels because it is big. Uh, may we are carrying, we are loading uh, or bunkering. We can say 10,000 meter cube. Uh, so no, it sir, is we ship, ship, ship we, we ships France officers got two bunker barges for LNG bunkering. Yeah, so we are taking from that barge. Yeah, recently yeah, they are, are taken in uh, France. Yeah, so yeah. We are we are taking bunker from that ship only. Okay, okay. okay yeah. yeah. Okay, so but they then, give uh, one BDN and one uh, quality certificate. Okay, okay. Sir, regarding okay, uh, slide uh, number 15, uh, there was a reference from uh, slide number 15, if I'm not wrong, Mr. Ranjit Kolkizar. Sir was asking maybe different. Uh, please, can you refer that slide number 15, sir? Can we go back? Regarding the word, like uh, double engines means they will have one powered and uh, aft like that. No, uh, Ramki, the amendment says that the uh, Carrying of the ores is not a requirement now if you have a two independent propulsion system. So now you want an explanation how they are doing ores and all. They are saying you don't need ores, buoyant ores. Okay, okay now you. you, you uh, answer, because we are not seeing this. Sir. We have not seen it. It's a future one for the oh. future one. Yeah. Right. Thank okay. You. Uh, okay. Uh, can I come back with the one point and a suggestion? Yes, sir. Uh, 
on this fully enclosed boat uh, of course uh, when we were sailing we never had these so i i may not be the best person to answer on the design but at least on basis what some discussions have taken place i think there are designed uh, places in a fully enclosed lifeboat also from where you are supposed to have the oars taken out as far as my knowledge goes but somebody who has been used to these would be a better person to answer but what my request would be that these sort of questions like uh, these specific queries if they could be sent to uh, me at the ho i could ensure i get some experts uh, opinions on this and i could share it back with you which you could disseminate it to the members who have asked the questions and generally whoever has attended uh, even regarding that uh, pressure relief device on the white space surrounding uh, uh, igf category fuel which incidentally may not be lng only could be other fuels also alternate fuels which are being considered so maybe it has something to do with the flexibility for that and also maybe that you are not uh, putting a nitrogen pad or something like that but i wouldn't like to give an answer like that uh, if those questions come to us uh, and if we could give appropriate replies i'll be more than happy to assist in that way thank you thank you thank you thank you sir uh mutu sami sir call over yeah uh, yeah regarding this watertight bulkhead and door is any change in the testing procedure they have not yet come sir they have given new regulation that uh, one is that you can have an hinged uh, watertight door for the cargo ship and other thing they have just uh, about the watertight door they are not speaking about thing they are speaking that uh, you can include the walls and the doors only that is the amendment they have brought the existing other there is no amendment like uh, he asked now uh, what is the closing time and opening time those things and all they have not yet touched only amendments we are talking about that in this issue also i think if i look at the background maybe it is related to something about emergency fire pump also in cargo ships where it is adjacent to the engine room bulkhead and yeah. the penetration of a seat chest i i may be again uh, just not uh, being aware of this fully maybe not be giving a fully correct answer but we could do that uh, for you and come back to you but i think it was to give provisions for those sort of arrangements as well that this uh, came in but we could look into the background of these and share those uh, shortly so i have noted them but if you could also just send them i will uh, try to get you appropriate answers also for these thank you okay okay thank you very much uh, i think and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. mutusami one, one i like to make one announcement everyone we know that we have an uh, lng lng dual fuel expert among us that is mr ragu so we will be shortly starting uh, he will be starting he along with the ime chennai will be starting an online courses for this lng and thing i am up any other questions please put it in the email so that he can follow it up okay uh, dr sila sami you can see the what of thanks please what of session also please yeah thank you mr sami on behalf of ime chennai branch it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this first technical seminar of this year 2023 i extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest sri rajiv nayar president imea who spared time for his busy schedule to grace this event today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events I would like to thank our speaker, Sri Suresh Chennai, Project Manager V Ships, our uh, IMA Chennai branch chairman, for not only sparing his valuable time to grace this occasion, but also for enlightening us with his commendable talk on the subject. Hopefully, 2024, we are going to get a lot of amendments in our shipping industry. I also thank all the exec executive committee members council members corporate members delegates and student members for making this event a grand success once again i thank you one and all for making this event a grand success wish you all a happy diwali